with negative news as well. CBS News correspondent Christina Ruffini reports from the White House. Our jobs recovery is going very strong. Nursing what he told reporters was a cold from his grandson, President Biden tried to focus on the healthier parts of the U.S. economy. We're looking at the sharpest one-year decline in unemployment ever. According to the latest jobs report, unemployment ticked down to 4.2 percent, but the economy only added 210,000 jobs, half a million fewer than economists had predicted. I also know that despite this progress, families are anxious. They're anxious about COVID. They're anxious about the cost of living, the economy more broadly. That anxiety extends to Wall Street, where stocks slid on Friday following a rough week of trading. And also to the hospitality sector, which added 23,000 jobs last month, but is still down 1.3 million pre-pandemic positions. Hopefully it ends sooner rather than later, because it is tiring and it's tough to come in every day knowing that you can be running short. But amid the economic stress, a bit of bipartisan relief from, of all places, Congress. The motion is adopted. Where lawmakers reached an agreement late Thursday night on a stopgap measure to avoid a shutdown and fund the government through mid-February. Funding the government isn't a great achievement. <laughs> it's a bare minimum of what we need to get done. But in these times, a bipartisan cooperation is worth recognition. President Biden signed that continuing resolution that'll keep the government funded, but there's a lot more on the congressional to-do list, including a measure to raise the debt ceiling and that social spending plan, the Build Back Better bill, that President Biden would really like under his Christmas tree. Lana? All right, Christina, thank you. U.S. intelligence officials believe Russia is laying the groundwork to invade Ukraine early next year. Close to 100,000 Russian troops are deployed in Crimea.